Mark is going to be picking the books that I read. Almost 100 pages yesterday. Eek. Ah. Mark, you ready? I need the books left on my... Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. I hope you're all doing well and welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. This weekly reading vlog is a little bit different because Mark is going to be picking the books that I read. If you don't know, hi, I'm Rachel. Mark is my fiancé, boyfriend, partner, whatever you want to call him. Um, we are engaged, but fiancé still sounds weird even though I've been engaged for like a year. But he's going to pick the books that I'm going to read in this vlog. He's going to pick two out. He's going to pick one from my March TBR, so a book that I do technically need to read this month, but I have no kind of like inkling to read just yet. And then he's going to have complete free reign of my TBR trolley and pick a random book that isn't on my March TBR, isn't on my radar, just a random book that he wants to pick out for me to read. So he's gonna pick two books, hopefully I can read those put two books in a week and then we'll see what I think of them. So I'm gonna go get Mark um, to pick out the books and then I will come back with you on Monday when I start reading them. Mark, you ready? So these are the books left on my... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's start that again. Lucky the back pages didn't touch the floor. <laughs> the books are on my March TBR that Mark has left to pick between because I've soft in left this one and I'm currently reading this one. So you get to pick one of those four out uh, of one of those four and then you have free reign of my complete TBR trolley. Uh, you can pick one book off there as well. Okay. And I'll read those two, whichever you pick out, in my weekly vlog. That one's easy. I'll pick that. Oh, okay. You haven't even read any of the blows on the other one, but no. you just want to go for that one. Well, it's just when we were in Bath. Yeah. Was it two years ago now? Yeah, 2021. Yeah. yeah. I'll leave the vlogs down below. 2021, so three years ago. Yeah, almost. Or September, two and a half. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we saw the... It was released then, wasn't it? It was hardback, hard yeah. I'm surprised you've not read that yet. Well, I've only just got it, so Claire gifted it to me. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. There you go, Claire. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to read that one this week. Yeah. Okay. It was an adult thriller. Yeah. The husband goes missing, mm -hmm. um, and she doesn't tell the police right away, and it's like an unreliable narrator, because she has like she's clearly hi hiding something, but she hasn't told the police that he's gone missing. Anything on this trolley? Anything, front or back. Oh. <laughs> That's what every man wants to hear. <laughs> um. Got a lot of variety, fantasy, adult, oh, it's romance. Often you have books with like, such white pages. Contemporary, I know. Uh, no fantasy. Yeah, like, some white fantasy. Like, fantasy year. It. I basically picked that one up because it sounds like the kiss of deception. Okay. That's like a YA historical romance. That's an adult contemporary. And that book is actually on my 2024 TBR. Not that I'm going to sway you, I'm just updating the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> Magic steeped in poison. It's a YA fantasy. Mm. Sounds interesting. I remember when you got that. Yeah, I got that on my birthday vlog last year. Link it down below. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? Mm. This one is uh, about Abby Morgan's partner who falls over in the bathroom. Which? Okay. Ooh. Falls down in the bathroom um, and ends up in a six month coma. And then when he wakes up, um, he doesn't remember who Abby is and just try and re navigate that relationship. Oh, it's a witch coven type thing. Yeah. It's like, um, they call it cozy fantasy. And obviously, fake dating is my favourite book romance trope. That was a gift from Chloe for Christmas. Oh, 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 okay, that one. Friends and Strangers have gone back. Mm. And that's between Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon and This Is Not Pity Memoir, which I'm not complaining about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's ventured to the other side of the trolley. Oh, you also can't read this one because that's also a sequel that I haven't read. The you still read that? No. See, you've had that for like... Well, I read 250 pages of it and then decided to DNF it and I was like, oh, I'll keep it because I'll read it eventually and like four years has passed and I still haven't read it. I think that could technically be the oldest book on my TBR. Yes. That was a gift from Emily. Everything I know about love. That's so another 
a novel of non-fiction. Who thinks about love? Do you not know I could get enough from me? Is that no, so clearly not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, there's a cat on this one. I like yeah. cats. I just like animals, but what's this one about? Cat lady. The cat lady. A about a woman trying to figure out life, pretty much. Yeah, sounds like you. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might stick with these two. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, mm, is there one not more of your fave out of these two? Not that I wasn't planning on reading either of them anytime soon, so you can okay. completely pick. I wasn't asking pick. for you to choose. I was just, no, I know. I didn't want you to tell me. I was just wondering no. if there was one that you'd... Mm, out of curiosity, I think I'd go with that one. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so excited. Okay, this is not a pity memoir by Abby Morgan. This one basically follows her partner when he goes into a coma. Um, and then when he comes out of it, he doesn't remember who he is um, and who she is. And he thinks she's working for the state as an imposter. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited about this one too. Thank you very much. So we have, we have a non-fiction. The Great Angle. And a thriller. I'm so excited. I will see you on Monday when I start reading these two books. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars. will sing about your heart maybe the trees will whisper the word maybe the sun will spread your joy to the ones who lost their hope As you saw, he picked out one book from my March TBR that was already kind of curated um, and therefore he picked Ghosted uh, by Jane Ashworth because this was the book that we discovered together in Bath in 2021 like you saw in the clip. So I think it was quite an easy choice for him to pick this one. Um, this is a kind of like thriller, kind of suspense, I don't really know, dark contemporary maybe because it does feature topics such as dementia. Um, so it could kind of go more into character development which I'm intrigued about. So I'm very very intrigued for this one, I can't wait to read it. And then the next book which he had complete free reign of on my TBR trolley was he picked This Is Not A Pity Memoir by Abby Morgan which is obviously a non-fiction book basically following Abby Morgan as she finds her husband or fiancé boyfriend just her partner of 18 years collapsed on a bathroom floor and life is never the same again because he ends up going into a hospital doctor induced coma and then when he comes out of it six months later he doesn't know who anyone is and believes that Abby his partner is part of the government um, and working for the state so how do you kind of like live with someone and rebuild that relationship when they kind of don't want to trust you so yeah really really intrigued by this one However, I'm not going to start on those books just yet because I'm currently in the middle of my current read which I'm absolutely loving and don't want to stop reading but I am hoping I can finish it today. So I'm just going to take you along on reading this one as well and that is The Burnout by Sophie Kinsella. I am loving this book so much. I am over halfway now. I started it on Saturday so this is really good going for me seeing as I've been in a reading slump kind of for the last like two and a half, three weeks. Um, so I'm very, very happy that this one has like really grasped my attention. I think the reason I've been loving this book so much is because it basically follows a character who has been burnt out who doesn't really feel like life is very fun anymore she just has her routines and that's kind of it and she just feels very very overwhelmed very overstressed very overworked at the company that she's working at so she actually ends up running away just randomly on like a Tuesday morning and tries to join a convert and tries to kind of join a nunnery and then one of the people who 
she works with tries to pull, call her back. She ends up running away from that convert because they wouldn't take her in and ends up bumping her head and kind of passing out. She ends up in hospital and then the doctors kind of write her a note to take some time off work. And she ends up going back to the place that she always spent her childhood. She goes back to the seaside um, and the town is now very run down. It's off season. She stays in a hotel that is kind of like really struggling. And you basically follow her taking some time out, trying to really figure out who she is now, kind of like, what she wants to do with her life and just kind of like rebuild herself up having been kind of like given some time off work to kind of like recenter herself and then she f um bumps into another character who's staying in a hotel called finn who's also kind of given some time off work to kind of like reinvent himself and really kind of like come to terms with what he's been getting on with um without spoiling it and i'm really really enjoying it so much i love sophie Kinsella's writing style she makes it so realistic so readable and just so easy to read like it's very digestible um so i'm loving this book and i have a feeling it's gonna be like a four 4.5 stars maybe a five i don't know i'm just really really enjoying it so that's the reading update for monday i'm hoping to finish this one today i'm on page 238 out of like 380 so there is potential for me to finish it. Yeah, like 380. So there's potential for me to finish it. Um, and then hopefully I can get onto these two and see if Mark picked well. So welcome back to another vlog and I'll keep posted. I have just finished work for the day. I am so tired. I have about 15 minutes until I need to start making dinner for when Mark gets home. So I thought I'd sit down and read a little bit of my book. I am now on page. 274 out of 380 so I have 100 pages left to finish for me to be able to finish this today. I still have hope that I can finish it so fingers crossed I'm going to stop rambling um, and get on to reading so I can read like 15 pages before starting to cook dinner. Then I'll cook dinner, then Mark will be home, have dinner, watch some TV, eat some fudge, chill out with Mark, read a little bit and then go to bed as per my usual night routine. Um, so yeah I'm really really enjoying this still and I can't wait to see how it ends. It's getting a little bit more slow pace like there's some sort of like mystery thing going on that I'm not that interested in but like I'm still really enjoying the character and the main character's like kind of like character growth and her relationships and kind of how they're evolving it's just like this side plot that I'm not 100% invested in but I'm still enjoying it so definitely more like a 4 4.5 I don't think it's going to make a 5 anymore so yes still enjoying we'll continue reading and I'll keep posted smile what if the wind could spread your love what if your sweetness could reach everyone there being awards mm. It's now Tuesday evening, got home from work, had dinner, tidied up the kitchen from dinner, got into my PJs and I thought I'd update the vlog because I finished this morning The Burnout by Sophie Kinsella and I gave it 4.5 stars. <laughs> I love this book so much and I read The Party Crashers last year by Sophie Kinsella, that was my first Sophie Kinsella and I gave that a 4. So this one ranks a little bit higher but I love both of them but I definitely think this one I prefer a little bit more just because of the subject matter obviously following a main character who has burnout who's been signed off work to kind of like de-stress and she like obviously goes and has a respite in her kind of like comfort town because that's where she spent all her summers growing up and she has like a really special connection to it so just having that sort of like connection to the main character who felt burnout and me being in a reading slump I really feel like those two kind of like paired together and I really enjoyed the writing style I love the fact how Sophie Kinsella does really focus on this like traditional woman's chick lit focusing on self-development self-growth really putting her main character her female protagonist at the forefront on the plot line of the storyline but then also like sprinkling in some romance but what I loved about this romance specifically was that they didn't fix each other they were both dealing with burnout for different reasons and they both went to the seaside town that they grew up on so they had this like interesting connection but they didn't fix each other and they decided to have a romantic relationship after they'd fixed themselves by themselves over a prolonged period of time and I just love this book so much. The writing, the setting, the subject matter, the characters, the personal journey they both went on, just everything about this book was perfect bar the little sub 
plot that kind of features a little bit of a mystery. I didn't really feel like it was necessary. I didn't really care for it. It was just kind of like there and um, maybe to try and pull the story a little bit forward and bulk out a little bit, but I didn't think it was completely necessary. So that was the bump of the 4.5 rather than a potential five, just because I felt that those parts were a little bit too slow. But overall, highly recommend this book absolutely loved it thank you once again for kayla for gifting me your used copy i do really, really appreciate it because this is going to go pride of place on my bookshelves once i reorganize them because that's the downside to having a rainbow bookshelves is every time you read a book you're like i don't know where this book's gonna go obviously it's a blue book and i have majority blue books so it's easier to fit a blue book into my shelves than it is any other, any other color but still a tricky mission so now that that one's done i can officially start the proper reason that i started this vlog and that was to read the books that mark picked out for me this week so it is tuesday so i still have a lot of the week left to read the two books mark picked out for me and i am going to start with ghosted this isn't very long or it doesn't seem very long anyway yes it's less than 300 pages so i'm hoping i can read it over the next three-ish days i'm hoping that the fact that the last three books i've read have all been given 4.5 stars it means i'm completely out of my slump i rated i heart hawaii 4.5 the partner plot by christina forrest 4.5 and now the burn up and so can sell at 4.5 so i want to roll with ratings i just hope that means that my reading slump is way in the past so i'm hoping to read like 100 pages a day of this and try and get it done over the next three most likely four days and then intersperse that with this is not pity memoir but i'm abby morgan but i think for tonight for the plans for this evening is to probably watch some queer eye of mark and then settle down to read and start this one so i'll keep you posted <laughs> I don't know if this is a good angle or not, so bear with, but happy Friday. I haven't updated this vlog in a little while because I don't know whether Mark picked badly or not, but I'm not far through either of my books. Eek. Ah, I'm scared. Um, okay, let's just talk about it. <laughs> Basically on Tuesday evening I did start Ghosted and I got about 20 pages into it. This is a very slow reading book. It takes a lot of brain power. Usually I can listen to music in the background, I can listen to TV, Mark and Player's game, I can concentrate on a book. This one I can't. I have to have full concentration, I've got to be silent, I have to have no distractions in the surrounding area for me to be able to concentrate on this book and I don't know if it's because of the writing style, the way it's written, because it's kind of a little bit different to what I'm usually used to, or because I'm not really enjoying it. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm now 66 pages into this, and it's definitely more of a dark contemporary, and it's definitely just an internal monologue about the main character, and she's basically telling you, and going back in time and telling you exactly why she didn't tell the police her husband they're missing, making up loads of excuses. She unpacked her husband's belongings from his chest of drawers and took them out to the bike shed in their apartment complex and then deciding to actually take them back upstairs because it might look suspicious to the police. But you don't really know why she's recounting everything that she did incorrectly and why everything that she's recounting is really suspicious. Kind of like what actually happened to the husband. I think the reason why I'm not really connecting to this book is because I'm not really connected to the characters. You get kind of no flashbacks to what their relationship was actually like. And I feel like for this story to work, you need flashbacks to their relationship and to make you really want to find out what happened to the husband. Otherwise, I'm just a bit like, I don't really care what happened to the husband because I don't know what he was like before he went missing. So I don't really know why I should be interested into where he's gone. So not loving this one. I'm going to give it to like the 100, 150 page mark and see where I get up to. And then the other book that I started yesterday because I was like, if I don't read something, I am going to put myself back into a reading slump. So I picked up the other book Mark picked out for me, which was obviously this is not a pity memoir. And I'm 30 pages into this, one chapter. The other thing Mark did wrong, both of these books have fucking long chapters. They're both about 30 pages per chapter in both of these books. Long chapters are like, yeah, okay, they're not exactly uncommon, but they're definitely not common in the books that I read because I read romances um, and contemporaries, and they tend to be like 10 pages max per chapter. These are both 30 pages a piece per chapter, so they're already daunting to read. This is no exception. This first chapter was 30 pages. The second chapter is up to page 57, so another 27 pages. And it's the same with this one. The chapters are so long, which also doesn't make me want to read. But I thought, if I don't pick up the other book, I am never going to read this one, and I'm going to put myself back into a reading slump. So I picked up this one last night, and this one definitely reads a lot easier, which, yay, because it is basically just Amy Morgan 
reaccounting what happened to her husband. They're not actually married, so she tells everyone that he's a husband, but he never wanted to get married. And with this one, compared to this one, because they're actually quite similar, not in terms of the husband's gone missing, but the wife's perspective on what's happened to her husband, they're very similar. Um, obviously, this one is about Abby Morgan, who's recounting what happened to her partner, because they're not married, because he didn't want to get married, um, when he falls down in a bathroom and ends up in a hospital-induced coma. It actually is because, it doesn't say on the blurb, it's because he has MS and he's been suffering for MS for the last seven years. And in the first chapter, you got an understanding and a past kind of timeline of kind of what their relationship was like, unlike this one. <laughs> I feel like I make quite a lot of comparisons. Fiction, non-fiction, just as an FYI. So this is real life, this is fictional. <laughs> and you kind of do feel a sense of belonging within this family because you're getting a true account of Abby Morgan and she's telling it in second perspective. So you as the reader is getting, you did this, you did that, um, you felt this way, you didn't die, etc. So it's really more personal that way. And I think that's a really interesting take. But I'm only 30 pages into it, so I can't really say too much. I am on my lunch break now. I've just made myself a cup of tea. So I'm gonna sit down and Probably read another chapter of this one to be fair because I'm just more inclined to see what happens in this one than I am with this one but I also don't want to lose too much time not reading this one because I know that if I leave it for too long I won't want to pick it back up again so I think what I'm going to do is read a chapter of this decompress a little bit and then revert back to this one this afternoon this evening so that's the Friday update I don't know if I'll get these books finished this week because they're both really difficult to read in terms of like pacing long chapters dense writing etc but that's where we're at and I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Now it looks like it's very late at night, but it's actually like 10 minutes later. Um, the rain has died down, but I'm now on to chapter two. It's such an emotive book. Like the way this book is written is so kind of like powerful because you really feel immersed in the story because it's told a second perspective. Um, and it makes you want to keep reading because the last chapter ended on and you will never be the same again. And it's like, why I need to keep reading, but it's really like heavy to read and I need to take a break and also my lunch break is over so I have to go back to work but I think I have decided that I'm just going to focus on this book get this book read and then go on to Ghosted and continue and finish that one because these books are weirdly really similar and I think I'm finding it difficult to differentiate the two in my brain whilst reading both of them at the same time so I'm going to pause on Ghosted finish this one because this one just makes me want to read a little bit more than Ghosted um, and then I'll finish off Ghosted but yeah that's that's the update. <laughs> it is now Saturday and I managed to read almost 100 pages yesterday of This Is Not a Pity Memoir by Abby Morgan. I read 99 pages so I'm really hoping that over the next couple of days I can get this book finished. I have rescheduled some of my videos so I have longer to read these books that Mark has picked out for me so hopefully I can do that um, but I'm I am really enjoying this book. It's I really like how it's written. I really like the writing style. Um, it's just obviously very difficult to read because it's obviously all about... It's finally got to the part where Abby Morgan's partner doesn't recognise her and doesn't want her in the room. Like, he remembers everyone else in her family. He remembers his kids, his son and daughter. He remembers his brother, remembers his sister-in-law, remembers his mum and dad. But he just doesn't remember Abby. It's such... so interesting and... The reason why he was put in a coma because he has MS and he was taking a drug and I think they believe that that drug that he was taking to help with some of the side effects of MS caused this massive side effect and obviously made him go into a coma. And there are 22 other cases in the world that also had this same kind of sort of side effect um, that had like, it, I think he had like a tumour on his spinal cord, um, but it wasn't cancerous, but it was making him like lose his memory and get him really agitated. It's really interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm really finding this book fascinating to read. It's really, really hard to read um, because he remembers everyone else in his family bar his like basically wife. They're not married, but they've been together for so long um, that everyone just sees them as husband and wife. So yeah, it's really difficult to read, but really, really enjoying it and finding out a lot. Um, and it's just really easy to read. It really feels like you're reading a fiction book um, and you have to keep kind of taking yourself out of the story and realizing this happened to a family. So yeah, I'm gonna keep reading. 
I have about half hour to read before me and Mark are heading out for the day. It's lovely and sunny um, and I'm going book shopping. There's going to be a whole separate video for that. So look out for that. If yeah, that video would have already be posted by the time you see this one. So if you haven't seen it, I'll link it down, link it down below. But yeah, I'm about to go book shopping, which I'm really excited for. Um, and yeah, I will keep posted. got back from book shopping time to get changed and then time to read on the sofa it is now the following monday and i'm here to wrap up this vlog because i have finished one book so i'll talk about this and then i'll go on to why i'm not finishing the other book in this vlog so yesterday i did manage to finish it's not a pity memoir by abby morgan and i don't rate non-fiction so i'm not going to rate it but i thoroughly enjoyed my time reading this i think it is because of the writing style which i think i've mentioned before it really does feel like you're reading a fiction story um it's very thought-provoking it's very kind of like profound it I made me think of like you never know what tomorrow will bring you just assume that you're going to be another it's going to be another happy healthy day um but you don't actually know you actually go through this book thinking it's going to be mainly about abby morgan's husband not knowing who she is and yes that is a main part of it because of the side effects that this ms drug gave to abby morgan's husband jacob but it's a lot about um kind of fa family rallying around her at this time because whilst Jacob is in hospital for over a year like 400 and something days Abby Morgan actually di gets diagnosed with breast cancer at the same time and it's quite an aggressive one so she has to go through chemotherapy and radiotherapy so yes you go in with this kind of like understanding that it's going to be about why Abby Morgan's husband doesn't remember her but it's so much more than that and it made me really realise that, like I said, tomorrow is never guaranteed. You have no idea where your life is going to be at this time tomorrow. It could completely change. And yes, the chance that it's going to change is slim, but there's always a chance. So, like, take life by the hand. And Abby Morgan kept kind of reflecting on this in this book because Jacob, for her, was very much her, like, pusher outside of her comfort zone and to do things that she was scared on. And then that brought her the true memories that she has of her family. And I just really, really enjoyed this book. Um, and do recommend the read if you're interested in it. Um, it definitely read like fiction, so if you're kind of intimidated by non-fiction, memoirs, that sort of thing, it definitely read like fiction. You had to keep coming out of the story and realising this actually happened because it did truly read like a fiction story. Um, so yeah, overall, really enjoyed this book. And then obviously it leads me on to the second book I was meant to read for this vlog, Ghosted by Jane Ashworth. And in total, I got 66 pages into this book before soft DNFing this book. I'm going to soft DNF it. I just don't think this book is for me at this time. I want to give it another go because it is a dark contemporary and I do enjoy dark contemporaries. It's definitely more of a dark contemporary than it is a thriller because you do get an internal monologue on why Laurie has is doing the act she's doing post her husband going missing. Um, and she does, she does seem in her own head very, very suspicious in some of the acts that she's doing to try and just live her life, which she thinks is normal, but you're like, as the reader, you're like, that's very sus um so it is a really interesting concept i just think weirdly mark picked out two books that were really really similar and i couldn't differentiate between the two whilst reading and this one was drawing my attention more so i read this one finished it and now i think i'm too detached from this story having not read it in four to five days to warrant me going back to it and finishing the vlog having finished both of them so i'm going to end the vlog with not finishing this one, soft DNFing it, and I'm actually hoping I will get around to reading it this week. Um, but I'm not gonna vlog my experience reading it. So that is the end of this vlog. I have come out of a reading slump, thankfully. So I don't know whether to thank Mark for that or whether just to thank my own kind of like motivation to get myself out of a slump. But I do have one book to thank, and that's because yesterday I started Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams, just because I knew having finished, this is not a pity I might, if I wasn't gonna pick up a book now, I'm gonna put myself back into a slump because I've been very like all over the place with my slump at the minute so I picked up a romance I knew would do it and oh my god I am obsessed I'm only 50 pages into this book but I am obsessed I'm about to start another 
themed vlog so stay tuned for that because i'll be reading this one in that video but yes if you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a massive thumbs up and subscribe down below to see future content from me if you want to know what i brought in that little book shopping segment then i'll link the video up above and down below for you guys to check it out i do anything from reading vlogs book videos journaling content so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future content and without further ado i'll see you in my next video bye guys Thank you.